Good evening, everybody. Once again, this is UFC 120 post fight recap with Steady Bear Thunderheart. And once again, uh, right now, I just want to let you know that I definitely want to thank Dana White and UFC for putting this event for free on Spike TV. In comparison to last pay per view in um, UFC 119, I tell you, this was a total 180 tonight than it was for UFC 119, which really sucked. So. I'm happy about this event tonight, so let me get down to this right now, and this card, and the results of it. So James McSweeney versus Fabio Maldonado. So, and the winner is Fabio Maldonado by TKO. So, just thought I'd tell you that. And of course, um, Spencer Fisher versus Kurt Warbarton, and the winner is Spencer Fisher, the unanimous decision. So I thought I'd tell you that. And now uh, this was a really good one um, right there. Paul Sass versus Mark, Mark Hulse. You know, um, Paul Sass, the way he was doing his jiu-jitsu, especially from, you know, the for, from you know the from his back position, it just reminded me so much back in the day of the Hoy, when Hoyce Gracie was dominating the three UFC events. Simply as that. And so the, he was aggressive and on his back and really getting a triangle submissions and attempts and uh, from many attempts in an aggressive manner but finally he finally got um holst into the triangle choke using the arm bar and simply we had he had no choice but the tap so congratulations to paul sass on his victory and rob bolton um oh, sorry rob broughton versus vinicius Carreras, and the winner is rob broughton submission so that was a good one right there in and out of itself and then, of course, um, Sariel Diabate versus Alexander Katefson. And the winner is Alexander Katefson via tap out rear naked choke submission. And he basically, um, Alexander really pounded him. And according to some people's reputation, um, what he, they say about Sariel's reputation of being a great striker, he outstruck um, Sariel and even put him in a rear naked choke for a while, long while and then finally um, settled down enough so he actually put a lot of pressure on him and finally got the tap out so in any event you know congratulations Alexander Katafson for the victory on that so that was a great m match right there and James Wilkes versus Claude Patrick and the winner is Claude Patrick um, unanimous decision so that was pretty good now this was a very interesting fight needless to say Chick Congo versus Travis Brown. Now, um, now of course there was no winner in this one. This was actually declared a draw by the judges' cards. I was like, what? Whoa, okay. And in a way, I thought I really thought that Travis Brown had this match. Quite frankly, um, but Chick Congo still fought back. Um, it was actually the first round went to Travis Brown. I, you know, because he was he showed really strong. In, in the first round, like takedowns and so forth, but then Chicago, um, he had a, like one point taken away from him because he was holding on to the shorts. However, um, despite all that, um, as far as the, the you know the the point taken away in the second round, Chicago just kept the pressure on him on the fence and kept you know with some good knees to the legs of Travis Brown. So Travis Brown, of course, started like limping after and during the third round. So he wasn't making an, an impact like he was in the first round, nor was Chicago. But at least those two still went at it, and there was still some action going, and it just turned out to be a draw. So sister kiss, I suppose. So not too many people were happy about it, but not too many people were too sad about it either. So it was just one of those things that happened. Well, you know. Let's move on to this next matchup. John Hathaway versus Mike Pyle. Now, of course, the winner is Mike Pyle via um, unanimous decision. Now, Mike Pyle, um, now, just hearing the fact that he recently trained with Randy in the natural couture, just to basically told me um, how well his takedowns were. And, he, and not only was his takedowns were great, but of course, he was also out striking um, Hathaway in the first round. Then he even did some groundwork to a, such a degree that he had him in like in an arm triangle with his legs, and of course he he was stuck right. Um, John Hathaway was stuck, and of course Mike Pyle had him in like in a, like in the legs where he had him wrapped up, 
And all he had to do with his arms, he had no choice but to just keep blocking because all he did, Mike Pyro just kept elbowing him and elbowing him, punching and punching him until the, the second round was over. And for a normal um, athlete, that would have been a straight either tap out or a knockout or a choke out, depending on what's, who's who or doing. But, I mean, wow. Just the fact that John Hathaway survived that, that gave me a lot of respect for him. That shows me how tough he was. So that was a great, great fight right there. And of course, in the very end, Mike Pyle just kept on putting the pressure on him, taking him down, attempting submissions, out striking him. So, you know, Mike Pyle basically dominated. It went the distance, but Mike Pyle was dominant. And training Randy Couture basically paid off. So, wow, that was great. And. And of course, another, let's see, another main event, uh, another card that was near the main event was Dan Hardy versus Carlos Condit. Now, Carlos Condit, of course, is one of the tra um, trained fighters from Greg Jackson's um, um, MMA gym in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And from what the reputation of Greg Jackson is, that the training has been extremely fierce along the lines of Rashad Evans, St. George's St. Pierre, the welterweight champion of UFC, all this type of stuff. So, so the fact that he got this training there, basically, and then of course, and he went out and he fought Dan Hardy, and Dan Hardy was a great, you know, he's a great fighter in, in his own right, but hard chin. George's St. Pierre couldn't finish him up, but yet, Carlos Condit was actually able to knock him out. And I mean, when, when they were swinging and they were throwing punches, what happened was both of them reached for the, for the left um, hooks, but Carlos Condit was actually, sh arm was shorter, and, and, and that's, not only was it shorter, but it actually had a reach, an accurate reach towards Hardy, and Hardy's had longer, but it, was, but it missed. So it was just a batter luck. It, it was luck, but it was still great. It was still skilled enough that Carlos actually connected to Dan Hardy. When he went down, he threw a couple more punches, and the referee just put a stoppage and said, enough, and gave him the knockout victory, and that was it. I mean, so congratulations, Carlos Condit. I mean, that was awesome. The most, If there was a knockout of the night, that would have been it right there for me. That would have been a great, um, the knockout of the night for me right there. So that would be that was a great great fight overall, and then the main event was Michael Bisping versus Yoshihiro Akiyama. Of course, the winner was Michael Bisping, um, unanimous decision. Now this was an awesome awesome main event. I mean, even though it went the distance, at the same time though, when Akiyama first started, he actually threw the first punch and actually rocked Michael Bisping like the first hit right there. And Michael Bisping, of course, got a little excited, well, too excited that he was still getting rocked and still getting punches. And, of course, what Joe Rogan said the very best, he just needs to settle down and get his, you know, form back together and get his um, faculty straight and get, get this, um, the fight moving. And he got it moving his way. And then he even basically tried to do some takedowns. Akiyama tried to do some takedowns. Didn't really work too well. But Akiyama didn't really do too much takedowns. He just depended on, on the big right hand that he was depending on way too much that he didn't really do a lot of mixing up, which really surprises me because Akiyama is usually really good in mixing it up, attempting takedowns. And, and I know they try to do something new and at least you know do more strikings and stuff, which is fine. At the same time, I think he should also add more strength to it. And that's probably why he lost the unanimous decision because he didn't try to attempt to take down more and really get aggressive. But at least Michael Bisping didn't necessarily go too much to the right this time, like how he made a mistake in the past but with how Dan Henderson knocked him out, how some other people were able to get him because they keep, he keeps on going to their right and then their, their right hand would reach out and hit him and it would have been all over. But... At least he did the right thing this time and actually went forward versus going back too much or going to the right. So he went to the left and he went forward towards Akiyama, throwing some good combinations, good leg kicks, good kicks to the head and so forth. And of course Akiyama just kept coming at him. And he wasn't gassed out this time. And this is another thing too. Akiyama was also trained recently his camp by Craig Jackson. So that was an improvement right there in and of itself that he didn't get gassed out and he basically kept coming, but at the same time, Michael Bisman just did a little more, and he came out more, and this is his hometown, so why not? So he got the victory. Congratulations, Michael Bisping, for the victory. And 
And so that's it. I mean, this was a total great event. I was definitely satisfied. And, you know, and I cannot wait for the next event, you know, for Brock Lesnar versus Kane Velasquez for the Heavyweight Championship. And I can't wait to see this. And tonight I got a chance to watch it in the comfort of my own home. So, in any event, um, thanks for watching. And I'll definitely talk to you guys later. Healing. It is all that is.